We live in wonderful, horrible times. This video is an excerpt from a larger presentation called Fire and Brimstone in Fort McMurray, considering some implications of apocalyptic rhetoric in climate communication, and it draws from the forthcoming book, The Teacher-Friendly Guide to Climate Change by myself, Ingrid Zabel, and Rob Ross. It's a reflection on teaching about climate change and really about the larger world. Teaching about climate change can be horribly depressing work. It seems as though we are marching headlong into hellish times and are not sufficiently rising to the challenge. This, to some degree, is the natural state of things. We have always lived in horrible times, if you look at it that way, which I tend to do. We've also always lived in marvelous times. Sometimes I can see that too, but reminders are helpful. When the situation becomes dire, as it seems to be doing now, and recording this in late November of 2016, we do have a history of rising to, meeting, to meet the ominous challenges. It is my hope that we are about to do that now. To consider the concept of wonderful, horrible times, I'll quickly step through five generations of my own family history. My great-grandfather, Edgar Loomis, was born December 4th, 1843 in Lebanon, Connecticut. And my great-grandmother, his wife, Melissa, known as Minnie, Bridget Hardy, was born December 13th, 1847 in Hoskinsville, Ohio. Slavery was still firmly entrenched in the American South and Edgar and his brother Lucius both fought for the Union Army and Lucius died at the Andersonville prison camp. Clearly, these were horrible times. But the Civil War ended and my great-grandfather marched in front of President Lincoln. Horrible times were not over, but the abomination that was slavery did come to an end. Adgett and Minnie married in 1871 and honeymooned in Niagara Falls. They went on to have five daughters and four sons and were married for more than 50 years. The brood included twins, Ruth and Ralph, born in 1891. Ralph was my grandfather. I don't know if their lives were wonderful, but it did have some wonderful outcomes. Ralph, my grandfather, also saw the tragedy of war, serving in a machine gunner's unit in World War I. He also saw pestilence, helping to manage an impromptu hospital during the Spanish flu epidemic. His twin, Ruth, died as a young woman. But as these horrible things were going on, wonderful things were happening too. Nellie Brown, my grandmother, was the only woman in the University of Missouri's uh, geologic Rocky Mountain field camp, and Grandpa went on to earn a master's degree in agricultural economics and then a divinity degree. As an extension agent, he was effective in helping bring an end to swine cholera. He married Nellie, <coughs> uh, excuse me, he married Nellie, and they had four children, including twins of their own, pictured here, Carolyn and Marilyn. Marilyn is my mother, who was born in 1931. And my grandparents were married for more than 50 years. Grandpa managed a dairy co-op and preached in several churches and returned to the agricultural extension work for the University of Missouri in 1936. And Grandma taught physical geography and more. And Hitler. Hitler came to power uh, in Europe and the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, bringing the U.S. into World War II. And my grandfather was fired from the extension as, quote, the extension didn't need any pacifists. A few years later, my father, Roger Hass, enlisted in the Navy, though fortunately the war was in its final years. The war ended, and my dad served until just before the Korean War. My folks then met at the University of Missouri, dad attending on the GI Bill. And Jim Crow was still festering in the South, and Joe McCarthy was feeding the Red Scare, and rock and roll was coming up, and life expectancy was growing, and the skies were black with smoke and smog, and rivers caught fire, and my parents were married and had six kids, beginning with my brother in 1952 and ending with me in 1963, just a few more months before President Kennedy was killed. And Dad worked on technologies to see people through the forests of Southeast Asia, and my brothers worried about, but fortunately were not called for, the draft. And mom was a university librarian who wrote books about books, and Martin Luther King Jr. and Bobby Kennedy were killed, and riots, and there was Woodstock and civil rights, 
right, and the Civil Rights Act and the Environmental Protection Agency. They were wonderful, horrible times, and mom and dad were married for more than 50 years. And Richard Nixon and Kent State and free love and disco and the village people. And the lakes and the rivers got cleaner and the bald eagle came back. And eventually I got married and we had two wonderful kids of our own. One born in 2001, just a few months before September 11th, and the other in 2004 as the country grew more and more mired in America's longest war. All along, we worried about the fate of our children in these turbulent times, whatever time it happened to be. All along, horrible things were happening that looked like the end of the world, and each time it looked like the end of the world, we did things to make it not be the end of the world. And, okay, it never really looked like the end of the world, though it may have looked like the end of civilization. Most people are beautiful. Yes, horrible things are happening now. This was written in July of 2016 and recorded in November of 2016. In July, when it was originally written, it was the aftermath of a series of horrible shootings, and it looked like an unending series of horrible shootings. But violent crime is actually at its lowest level in decades, which is pretty wonderful. And 2016 will almost certainly be the year, hottest year on record which has brought unprecedented droughts and floods and fires to various parts of the world, which is pretty horrible. And my daughters are kind, hardworking, smart, happy, engaged in things that matter uh, and make the world a better place. And they're beautiful. And hopefully your kids are too. And so are you. These are, there are horrible things in the world. When the horror becomes clear to enough people, we do something about it to make it less horrible. Let's do that now and celebrate the wonderful things too.